Now, it's been said that to curb climate change, we need to look at greenhouse gas emissions. One suggestion is that airlines join Europe's emissions trading scheme. But will it work? Well, I'm joined now by Andrew Sentence from the University of Warwick and the former head of environment at British Airways. Andrew, what do you think? Well, I think emissions trading is a very promising way forward for um, tackling the problem of climate change. It effectively involves putting a cost or a price on the emissions. So when companies, whether it be airlines or power stations uh, or any other sort of activity, um, reflect that cost in the decisions that they take. Um, and we've already got the EU emissions trading scheme up and running for a large range of activities. Um, and I think it is a promising approach to try and extend that to the aviation industry. Two of the proposals for curbing climate change are taxation and carbon trading. Are these viable? I think there may be a role for taxation in some areas, but I think we should be trying to use carbon trading as much as we can. Um, I think there are two advantages um, from a carbon trading approach. One is the whole basis of carbon trading is that you've actually set a limit on the amount of emissions. Um, and if you can make that effective, that is actually what we need to achieve. So you, from an environmental standpoint, you're actually um, much more likely to achieve the objective that you set yourself. The second is that through a trading system, you find the, more, the most cost-effective uh, way forward. So you don't target specific activities and say, we've got to stop doing that. You let the market find out what is the best way, what is the cheapest and most cost-effective way of cutting emissions. And we, we use the market in a whole range of activities in our lives. Um, and I think we should be harnessing the power of the market in this, in this important area. Is enough being spent on technologies to curb emissions? I think you can see in some areas new technologies are being developed. But I don't think we have yet a consistent set of price signals across the economy. Um, if we look at um, the whole range of activities that we have in the economy, we don't necessarily price in the cost of the emissions that they generate in every form of activity. Now, an approach based on emissions trading is a good way of doing that because if all activities, or as many activities as you can, are brought into emissions trading scheme, that means you automatically uh, put a price on those and you put a limit on the amount of emissions that can be generated. It seems tackling climate change is a no-win situation. What do you think? Well, I think it's very early days in terms of the development of emissions trading. Um, it's relatively early days in terms of any sort of concrete measures to tackle climate change. We've been up until now establishing the scientific case and looking at the broad economic costs and benefits. We're only now getting into concrete measures. But also in terms of emissions trading, the EU emissions trading scheme only just got up and running last year. Um, and you can see it as being in a, a little bit of a pilot phase. It's going to expand its coverage as we go through um, future years. And I think over time, um, we will see much more what it can do. But if we look at where emissions trading has been applied in other areas, for example, to acid rain in the United States, to sulfur dioxide emissions, it has been very successful in getting environmental benefits in a very cost-effective and efficient way. Are you optimistic about the future of the environment? I think we've got the means to address climate change, uh, the mechanisms through economic instruments such as emissions trading uh, and the technologies can be developed. I think the key ingredients are getting the political will and political commitment to do it and also to get the right degree of international cooperation which is, which is always difficult. And we need international cooperation not just across a limited area such as Europe but with the United States and China and India and getting that broad coalition of countries pu uh, pushing in the right direction, the same direction, is going to be a big challenge. It seems there's a large focus on industries to do more to curb emissions, but could we all as individuals do more? Industry is, a, is an important element, but the private consumer also adds directly to emissions um, in two main ways, one through transport activities, uh, and obviously the, the private motorist is a key element of that. And secondly, the way in which we use energy in our homes and energy conservation by domestic consumers has got to be an important part of the equation. But I don't think we can isolate one activity within the economy, uh, whether it's industry or private consumers or the motorist, and say that is where we, you know, only in that area we've got to do something. We've got to identify all the areas where emissions are being generated 
and put in place the right economic signals uh, so that people reflect the cost uh, of adding to climate change in their decisions and therefore invest in the technologies to avoid that and take action themselves through changing their behaviour.